Well, you said at five years old, you picked up a basketball and it just came natural from that point on. Natural, natural as is, is, is can be. Natural as can be. I, you know, till this day, I don't know if my dad took me and put the ball in my hand. I want to say he did. I, you know, obviously I don't remember exactly who put the ball. I know I was five or six years old. And when it was introduced to me, I, I picked it up. It was just natural, you know, uh, not double dribbling, not dribbling with two hands. They showed me to dribble one and I was, it was just, it came, it became a natural thing. And, and from that time on, from the first time it was uh, introduced to me, I, that's, that's what I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to be. <laughs> and uh, by the time I was, I want to say seven going on eight, cause my birthday's in the summer. So I was turning eight and they were having this tryouts. Uh, uh, God bless the soul, a guy by the name of DeBron Murray. He was having a tryouts in the park that I would go to every day in the summer, in the morning. I would get up every day, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, eat a bowl of cereal and just run across it to this big street, uh, Merrick, Merrick Boulevard to this park called St. Elmo's Park, right? And he was having these trials, all all ages, from my age all the way up to high school kids. And when he laid eyes on me, Vlad, he just said, he came to me, he just said, I've, he's coached and been around a lot of players since they were young. And he said, he ne- he said I, I'm probably gonna be the next one that makes it, make it out of here. And I, and I haven't said at that time, I don't know what he's really talking about. Cause I'm like, man, I'm just a kid. I'm happy to play ball. I just want to go, you know, when they were having the trials, the funny part about it, I was mad that they had the trials in this part because they're taking up the court that I like to come play on. So I'm like, oh, I can't, play, I can't shoot on a goal. I can't shoot on a court that I want to play on because <laughs> they're having, he's having his trials in the park. Well, around that time, you know, by the time you turn about 11, 12 years old, right. uh, you know, the whole drug scene in in Jamaica and Queens are is going crazy. You got the fat cats, you yeah. got the supreme teams, yeah. you know, you got the Pappy Masons and so forth. And they would sponsor these big basketball tournaments. Yes, sir. And you had a coach, I guess, at your elementary school? Oh man, my coach, one of the uh God bless his soul, named Greg Vaughn. Greg Vaughn. God yeah. bless his soul, man. Uh another guy who had the chance to see me at a young age. I went to the elementary school. He was the coach of the basketball team. He was the phys ed teacher. And so when at, at the school, we would play intramurals, class versus class and everything. It would be wiffle ball. It could be uh, kickball. It was a uh, 50-yard dash. We It was class versus class. And every sport, football, every sport I was I excelled in. You know, I was a gifted athlete, um, and he just couldn't believe it. But the part that he couldn't believe was when it came time for basketball, and he couldn't believe that I was a fourth grader, and I was dominating the sixth graders, and he couldn't he couldn't believe it. Now at this time, I had no idea that this guy. I mean, he was known throughout the, the neighborhood. He was a great guy, great man. Uh, cared for the kids, cared for everybody. Uh, I had no idea he was the referee in these very same tournaments that these the, the big time hustlers is uh, sponsoring. I had no idea. All I knew is fourth grade, fifth grade, and my sixth grade. So back then, you stayed in elementary school at sixth grade in New York City. You know, most of us went to in middle school. You did seventh, eighth, and ninth. You had the option the option to do ninth grade at your middle school, or you could go to high school as a ninth grade freshman. You had those options. So, so by sixth grade, I developed a relationship, a close relationship with him, a close relationship with him because I was his best player. Uh, no matter what school we went to, they could have five or six kids that uh, that is good, but he knew that I can count on me to, to do what I do. <laughs> And I've, uh, uh, even in summertime, he will he will see me playing somewhere and, and and drive by and check on me. So I had no idea he was refereeing until the the, the unfortunate day it happened to him that he was refereeing one of those big time tournaments and got into a situation that, that they didn't a few people didn't like the call and he ended up dying out there. How did he get killed? I want to say he got punched. He it wasn't a it wasn't a, he didn't get shot anything like that. It was a, a, a punch. I think the punch was to the to the temple side, the temple of his head, and uh, he went down. That was it. 
Yeah, I mean, how did you take that? Here you are. This is the guy that's really kind of changing your life and kind of setting you up for your next chapter, and then suddenly he's gone. It was the first of many uh, uh, deaths of people that are close to me. It was the first time I was young. It was the first of many that you know. It was the first that I had to you know deal with COVID because now I had to go come to school, and you go to school. So this happened actually to him. It happened when I was in the, in the summer of my fifth grade year. So when I come back to school in my sixth grade year, uh, he's not there. And, and 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 you know, it's somebody you it's somebody we leaned on. It's somebody if I if I was in school in, as well as other kids, it's somebody that uh, you go talk to when things aren't you know when things aren't going where you're at home. When you feel some kind of way, when you feel down about situations in, at home or something's going on outside in the neighborhood you is somebody could talk to because he's well well aware he's, he's familiar with you know everything that surrounds that neighborhood well i mean being in that type of environment and that was just one of the side effects of being in that environment yeah i mean a lot of people you got a lot of hustlers out there betting on the games and they feel that ref just messed up their $10,000, yeah, they're, they're yeah. going to feel some type of way at that ref oh no it, <laughs> it, 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 listen and it probably was more money than that. You know, mm. if you go back in that era with the, 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 the players that was involved with the betting, it was a lot more than 10,000. 10, might have been in the first quarter. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, everything is, it, it's, it's like, it's crazy with that environment because it's like you graduate in every level of that environment. You know, you, 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 you're first a kid, you're, you're, okay, I live in a tough neighborhood, you know not to hang around this part, not to stand on this corner because such this is going on in that corner, you know, to go over here, hang out with your friends out here, you know, to go to the park or do that. And then when you get it, you keep getting old and you keep each year, it's like you're graduating, not just from school, you're graduating from the other school of hard knocks. Yeah. Yeah. In, even if you're not involved, you're graduating with your eyes and your mind. I mean, at that time, there was literally millions of dollars in the street. Yeah, could be out right there outside. And yeah, yeah, just millions of dollars in the street. Whoever wants to join up, there's always a job for them. Carry this, look out there, yeah. sell this. You know, and here you are, broke. You know, living in a house with a bunch, you know, one bedroom house with all your siblings and your mom. Was there ever? Okay, I'm just going to do this a little bit and jump in and out, or you know, or I, I'm just going to dabble in this a little bit. Or was basketball just tunnel vision? So basketball was always the thing, you know. My my heroes, my so my heroes are the ones I could that are on TV, right? So at this time, you got guys like Mark Jackson, Pearl Washington, Rod Strickland. You got Kenny Smith. You got all these New York City guys that. Because I'm playing ball and, and with these, these different coaches are telling me about uh, a local guy that went to DePaul, Kenny Patterson, all these guys that are on TV. So I, you know, I, my love affair with basketball was always there. So I'm, I always want to be those guys. You see what I'm saying? Because you know, that's I want to. Every day I touch a ball, I want to. I want to be on TV. I want to go to this college. I want to make it to the pros. I want to be these guys. 